Hey everyone and welcome. We are Next Level Business Advisors and this is Business Stories of Success. If you want to break through and achieve your own business success by learning from other successful business owners, you're in the right channel. For more of our content, make sure you click subscribe and don't forget the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when new videos are added. Enjoy today's video. Hello, hello, hello. You're with Mark Adams at Next Level Business Advisors. I feel like I'm running out of breath already. I'm here with Jasmine Whittingham, and she is our uh, amazing youngest entrepreneur that I've ever spoken to <laughs> on this podcast. Hello, Jasmine. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm excited to talk to you because when I heard your story, I was blown away. I think people will be blown away as well. And if you can do it at your age, then I'm sure some old people like me can do it as well. So <laughs> let's get into it. Tell us who are you and tell us a little bit about your business. Well, my name is Jasmine Whittingham. I am, I live in Northern Virginia, so I'm home-based as a virtual assistant. And basically what I do is I help small business owners um, take on the tasks or actually I take on the tasks for small business owners that they don't have the time to handle because business owners have a lot to do. Um, so they can focus on their main task, um, keeping their services and or products quality, high quality for their clients. And I take care of the behind the scenes stuff that is really important, but nobody really sees. Okay. I love that. I love that. Now, I said, you're the youngest and I know you're a lady. Is it okay for you to give your age? I know some women say, never tell her, never ask a woman her age. Well, I'm 17. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, you could have said like, I'm under 35. I would have taken, okay. So you're 17. So now yes. this is impressive. So you're a 17 year old business owner yourself, right? What yes. role do you play? Well, well, let's get a couple things straight so we can get it all cleaned up. Give us the name of your business and how people can reach you in case they need your help. So the name of my business is Jazz Hands and then your team virtual assistant. Um, I usually like to keep things through email, uh, originally like for to schedule a discovery call through Zoom. Um, my website is jazzhandstva.com and that's usually how I would schedule it. Um, I, yeah, I definitely don't keep it to phone calls seeing as I am still a student. So I can't always just pick it up. I like to schedule it when I can't. I love it. I love it. Now, I want you to spell your website because when people are looking for things and they try to go by phonetics, it's not always right. So spell it out for us, please. So it's J-A-Z-H-A-N-D-S and then T-V-A dot com. Okay. Jazz Hands TVA, Teen Virtual Assistant. Awesome. Awesome. So we know how to, to reach you now. Let's ask you this question. How long have you been in business? Um, I started my business, it's been about a year um, in March. That's when I officially launched it, but I was, I had been working for um, close family friends um, way before that. Okay, all right. And let me ask you how, uh, what makes you an expert in your field? What makes me an expert in my field is being a team, really. Um, working with the technology and social media. I know social media in and out from a consumer standpoint because my generation pretty much spends all their time on social media. So I'm not sure you can really get a more uh, accurate view of what your viewers or your potential clients want to see. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about your business, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, virtual assistants, they come in different I'm going to say flavors, right? There's some who do this or some who handle phone calls and some who what specifically and not as specific as to the to the dime, but what do you specialize in as far as virtual assistance so people can get a good handle on what that is for you? So my main services would be contact coordination. So helping you stay on top of your um your contacts or leads that you have through your website or email marketing list, social media, um, again, the things that you might not really look at, um, because you can be losing a lot of clients that way by just not checking your inbox, really. Um, I used to do video editing, and I still do that, but it's not one of my main things, but that's how I started out. Um, and also, uh, Manage, I don't do social media management, but what I have is a package uh, to set up and rev up basically your service. 
Um, so some people just have a hard time setting up their social media, um, especially if, if they've been in business for a while, that might have not been the thing when they came into the business world. So just setting it up and then revving it up, so to speak, getting your followers, getting yourself started so you can feel comfortable. And then I might bring you on to someone else for a social media manager. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And you're right. I mean, when I started, it was getting my business card made up and getting something in the newspaper. So for people <laughs> who are my age, absolutely. It's a whole different thing. And when I'm speaking to my colleagues, forget about it. They're like, just what's this Facebook page thing? It's crazy. <laughs> so it's def and it is important, right? I mean, for businesses nowadays to be online is critical. And so you can help serve that critical need. Let me ask you, how did you decide on this specific journey to be a business owner in, in the in, as a virtual assistant? I really have COVID to thank, which is so ironic because I can't stand it, <laughs> but of it course. really is. The, <laughs> it's the one thing it's gotten me though. Um, I just really just wanted to start working and have a job, um, you know, somewhere like Starbucks or Walmart or something, you know, but at the time in COVID, I was not ready to uh, uh, work outside the home. But um, my aunt is actually a virtual assistant herself. And so she has always been trying to get me to get into it a little bit because she knows I can do it. Um, and I've always helped her with things like over the years, like all the time. Um, so that's kind of how I weaved into it. I needed, I wanted a job and I, I knew that I was able to do that with her help. Okay, very nice, very, very nice. And um, so you could have perhaps worked for her why did you decide to start your own business instead of working for another virtual assistant? Well, it's not to say that I didn't do that. I also work for virtual assistant agency. And so I started out mainly doing that. And then I realized I could use the skills that I had acquired with the agency and with my aunt as well, that I could use that and, and, people could actually find my services like valuable. Okay, very nice. That That's that entrepreneurial blood. Some people are just happy to say, hey, I'll just take this paycheck. And then some say, hey, I think I can jump out on my own and mm -hmm. do something a little bit more than what someone is paying me to do in a way. Awesome, awesome. So let me ask you this question. How do you define success? At my age, I do define success differently than maybe other people. It's not really monetary to me. Um, though, of course, I, I do like that part. I definitely find success is where I am right now and what I've what I've been able to accomplish um, despite like roadblocks and stuff. So I'm a teenager. I have school. I have, you know, life, things like that. And I've succeeded because I'm able to actually run a business despite those things or in harmony with those things because um, school is important. So that's what I find to be successful for myself. And I think it's different for everybody. Oh, it definitely is. One thing I've learned in interviewing so many entrepreneurs now is that success is always personal. Your version is going to be different than the next person. The other thing I've learned is that success continues to evolve, right? So today it's, okay, I was able to do this, this, and that. Next week, it'll be something different, or maybe next year, something like that. So yeah. I like your definition of success. What do you think is important to be successful in business? What's an important quality to be successful in business? Humility, definitely humility. Um, and also confidence at the same time. It sounds contradicting, but they work together. I think knowing that uh, you have value in your services and or, or products or whatever that you do, whatever it is that you do, knowing that that has value and being willing to have people pay for that and put that out there. But then also realizing there are some things I can't do. Um, and things that are just not my thing and, and being upfront with that with clients from the get-go. Okay, I like that. Let me ask you this, because some people, when they start out now, you've been in business for about a year now, right? We got, mm -hmm. we got it, you were coming up on that one year mark. What's one big mistake you've made in your journey so far that you'd love to share with us? I think one mistake that I've made is, for me personally, trying to make it being a little too serious about it. Um, seeing as I am 17 and I don't have to have it <laughs> for like to rely on as a way to live. Like 
I, I think I might have put a lot of stress on it, even though I didn't really need to. Um, and then not to say that it isn't business and it's not serious, but also realizing like, this is my passion. This is what I like to do. Um, and trying to not get away from what you started, why you started it in the beginning, really. Okay. All right. So then you adjusted your perspective. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah right. exactly. And, and how does that having, having not too much emphasis or stress on the business been valuable to you? It's, I feel like it's been valuable because I, I actually get more out of it um, because I'm not expecting um, the specific amount of money or the specific amount of clients to come out of it. Um, regardless of what I do, I'm like, okay, that was a successful day. I did this, I did that. And you know, I feel more accomplished even if it's not as much as what someone else may do. Okay. I like it. Now, let me ask you this question. You said your aunt is also a VA. Mm -hmm. She yeah. encouraged you. So, so how have mentors, and I would imagine she's a mentor, right? How has she she's contributed definitely. to your success? How does she contribute to your success in your business? She, first of all, I don't think I would have ever done it at all. It wasn't for her. So I, I think I kind of owe jazz hands to her at all in, in its entirety, but, um, Sometimes mentor is just someone there to back you up on things like there are certain things I know how to do, but I, I can't, I don't feel like certain in it and I can't, it's hard to articulate it and bring it to someone else and say, hey, I can do this and I'm good at this um, and you should use my services. That's what's hard. And so I think having a mentor, specifically my aunt, helps me to have more confidence in um, the services and what I could do. Okay, very nice. Um, what advice would you give to a new business owner? To take it slow, um, I think uh, everyone's different, but relying on a business for your general outcome in the very beginning usually may not go very well. Um, I know I'm young and I can't speak to that a lot, but I do. There is a reason I'm an entrepreneur. I have family members, pretty much all my family that are. And so I learned a lot from them. And so I guess not forget, not remembering or not forgetting why you started it in the first place. And um, even though it is your source of income, it's also your passion if, if you're going to the right business, really. Awesome, awesome. Um, Normally, we, we don't ask questions like this, but I'm going to ask it of you if, you, if it's okay, and it's because you're in school and what have you. And so I'm thinking that if a young person were to hear this interview, uh, they might have questions like, how do you juggle running a business and having a school life and other things that young adults have? How do you juggle it? What, what's been your, your secret? Tell us. Um, it sounds easy, but it's not really just balance um, and prioritizing things. Um, well, unfortunately for me, I find it unfortunate that school is my priority. Um, so you said it was your it, it is was, my priority. Okay, I find okay. that unfortunate. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> okay. But and I'm good at it, so I guess I just try to. I like to prioritize what I do throughout the day. Basically, if school is my priority, I start out with school. I don't leave that to the end of the day because then I could end up working the whole day and I actually do be school. I should mention this before I get into it. I am homeschooled for the most part. Um, okay. So that's really how it works. Um, and then I go to the public school just for one class that I take that I don't want to take by myself. Um, and that's after that is when I start work. So I think starting the day out with what, even if you don't like it, what's more um, important or is your priority helps instead of kind of just going by what you feel like doing. Cause what I feel like doing is making money, but <laughs> I don't have time to do that all day. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so let's say we are working together and I have a business meeting that I need you to be on at 9 AM. How does that work for you? So I have a little bit of a window before school sometimes. I don't keep it open all the time, but I make it work. But what I usually stay with is, um, they recently changed the school schedule here and it's sort of messing with it a little bit, but usually four o'clock um, is where I would have my 
my schedules. And then, you know, if it's going to be like a one, one timer, then that's different. I can kind of adjust my homeschool schedule to have a meeting. Um, but I don't do that often. Okay. All right. So you have some flexibility, uh, but, but you, you're able and, and tell me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're able to manage your own calendar. Is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And you try to figure out how to be balanced in that mm -hmm. so that it doesn't overwhelm you one way or the other. Awesome. Awesome. So now if you could go back to right before you started your business, what advice would you give yourself? I would probably tell myself that you don't have to, um, it's kind of like a, it will be okay sort of thing. Like it's not going to be the end of the world if uh, this one client doesn't work out, there will be other opportunities and they will show themselves. Um, and also you can work for them. Um, I think if I would get a lead in the beginning and it just wouldn't work out, I would just be like, oh my goodness, this is the worst thing ever. Why am I even doing this business? It's like, some things just don't work out. Um, and sometimes I look back and it's like probably for the better sometimes, mm. uh, you know, it depends. So that, awesome. that's what I would tell myself. Awesome. Awesome. So what's next for Jazz Hands, your teen VA? Where do you see yourself in the next year or two? I definitely see myself um, with less school. Obviously, I'm in my junior year, so I don't have much left. Um, the next year, I barely have anything to do. So focusing on my business a little more will be will open up some opportunities. Definitely wanting to find my niche and like where I fit in the virtual assistant world. It's it's good to start out as a general admin, but you know, I would I would like to narrow it down and know where I fit um, with my clients and finding my ideal client and people who I know want to work with me. And yeah. Okay, you're using those uh professional words. Ideal client. That's uh that's something that it took me years to figure out that there's such a thing. Have you ever heard mm -hmm. of the expression riches and niches? No, no, but I have no, an idea of what it yeah. is. Yeah, you, you, you're hitting it without even saying it. When you specialize, when you know exactly what you do, it allows mm -hmm. you to be more effective, more efficient, speak to the right people, easier to get clients. It's, it's riches and niches. So I like what you're saying. And I think that if you keep that up, boy, you're going to have a nice, successful journey. It's going to evolve and it's going to be nice. So, hey, I want to thank you for giving us some time and letting us into your world a little bit. And we look forward to seeing your continued journey to success. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure.